As I was playing the last part of Oddworld Stranger's Wrath, making my way up to take on the main villain, Mr. Secto, Big Boss the River, the realisation dawned on me that potentially this game might take place well before the Abe games did. And as a result, what if Secto was the guy who created the Magog Cartel? Now firstly, it should be noted, I'm thinking from a solely 2005 position. I'm talking about when the game was originally made, what the original intention of the creators may have been. Because nowadays, this theory is basically null and void for so many reasons. For one thing, the Oddworld canon has been reset and Lorne has stated that Stranger is intended to play a role in this new Quintology, which might suggest Stranger's Wrath is part of the old canon, but who knows, it's separate enough to fit into the new one potentially. But more conclusively, the HD remake of Stranger's Wrath has rupture farms barrels filled with Mudokan Pops as a nice little easter egg, but one that basically says this game takes place after Abe's Odyssey. Although it was assumed that Abe halted the production of this product after its unveiling to the investors, it would seem not judging by this. But I don't think this is necessarily a retcon by Strangers Wrath HD, as even in Munch's Odyssey, Abe says, Do you know what's in a Mudarkin Bob? suggesting they're a well-known item by this time and did successfully enter production despite the destruction of Rupture Farms. Back to Secto and the Magog Cartel though. So I'm talking about the initial intention of Oddworld Inhabitants back in 2005, when they were making the original Stranger's Wrath. One of my first ever, uh, I guess, lore slash theory type videos a few years ago was about the Magog Cartel, and I theorised that as the Octi guy, Secto species, is a relation of the Gluckens, but far more closely resembles the logo of the Magog Cartel than they do, maybe it's an Octi guy that's in charge of the organisation. This is suggested further by the fact Octigai are parasites and are very hidden in nature, taking over bodies to act as fronts for themselves, which suits quite perfectly Lorne Lannan's indicator that there's always someone higher up than who you think is in charge. And the most powerful people always remain in the dark. It would be perfect. However, for a long time after I made that video, I actually considered it to be a disproven theory in my mind, because I remember one time searching along Google Images and seeing an image from Stranger's Wrath of a logo representing the Octi guy, and while it was similar to the Magog Cartel logo, it was different. So in my head, I thought rather foolishly, well, if that's what the Octi guy looks like in that kind of design, then the Magog Cartel one must be something else. I tried searching for this image some time later to think more about it, but I couldn't find it. And I initially remembered it as being from a cutscene, but I skimmed through all the cutscenes, couldn't find it, so I was just like, ah, forget it. But now, years later, having played Stranger's Wrath again for the first time in nearly a decade, I found the image again, and actually appeared in the gameplay on a sign warning grubs to not be fishing in the Mongo River. Now initially when I saw it, I thought what I did before. You know, it's different to the Magog Cartel logo. But then I thought, hmm, well then again, this game set in Western Mudos takes place quite far from where the Abe games do in Eastern Mudos. A depiction of a cat from Morocco might look different to an image of a cat from Egypt, but it'd still be of a cat. Maybe this is just like a different depiction of an Akti guy. The same basic thing is there, and plus, as shown in Soulstorm in particular, the Magog Cartel uses variants of its logo that differ somewhat from the standard version. But it's still the same logo, it's still the same squid-like creature, presumably. Eventually, however, we made our way to the Secto Springs building, and there I realised something. The place is full of images and ornamentation featuring this depiction of the Octi guy, but much more professionally done than what was seen on the warning signs. And I realised, wait a minute, this isn't just depicting an Octi guy, it's depicting a water bottle to represent Secto's business, Secto Springs Water Company, and his ownership of the Mongo River. Well, that explains it. That's why the logo looked different. It wasn't meant to be an Octi guy. It was meant to be a mixture of an Octi guy and a water bottle. It was a logo specifically designed for that type of business. Now, to be fair, there were more logos later on in the game that weren't designed to look like water bottles, but still looked different from the Magog Cartel logo. So this, at the time in my head, re-disproved my original theory that I disproved and then reproved, in my head at least. 
But again, there can be multiple designs of the same creature, and some of these other logos are similar in design, but different in style, I'd say, to some degree. The reason I'm talking about the logo so much is because it's rather suspicious that it's such a similar design to the Magog Cartel logo. Like, it's not just of a similar looking creature, it's of exactly the same style, as if it was done by the same person. So thought occurred to me, what if after Stranger defeats Secto and ruins his water business, destroying the dam and freeing the Mongo River, what if he then travelled to Eastern Mudos and founded the Mogog Cartel? He didn't have anything left in Western Mudos anymore, after all. Although you might ask, why doesn't he just rise again and try to rebuild his business empire and take revenge on Stranger? I mean, he's defeated Steve's in the past. Steve's Steve. But you've got to remember, here's this one Steve who's fought his entire security force and destroyed everything he had. Secto's weak, to the point he doesn't even have a body anymore, and he narrowly escaped with his life. He's no doubt vengeful, but he's in no position to regain power and take revenge. Even if he tried to rebuild his businesses, Stranger would hear about it, and he and the Grubs would find him again and finish the job they started. So what does he do? He just drifts away along the Mongo River. This, the very same Mongo River that is known to lead at least somewhere in the realm of Eastern Mudos. Presumably, as it was specifically meant to feature in Oddworld Munch's Exodus, where apparently Munch was to travel to the source of the Mongo River, Mar Spa. So it's not as if getting there is an unrealistic prospect for Secto, all he'd have to do is keep on drifting through the water and he could easily end up around the general location of where we've seen the Magog Cartel operates. So a theory could be, he swims up the river, or down, whichever way it is, and ends up in Eastern Mudos, where, being the very experienced business owner that he was, he goes even bigger and founds what ends up becoming the Magog Cartel conglomeration of corrupt companies. Hence why the design and style of the Magog Cartel, and specifically its logo, is very similar to what Secto used to use back in Western Mudos. From an out-of-universe perspective, this would make a lot of sense, arguably. If this was the case, then presumably somewhere along the way, perhaps in the final game of the Oddworld Quintology, we may have met Secto again as the top villain of the car's hell. It'd be very clever to have foreshadowed this by having him in Stranger's Wrath so long before, like how they showed Thanos in the first Avengers film years before he was the main villain in Avengers Infinity War. Perhaps an argument against this would be, well, it'd be nice foreshadowing, but we've already defeated Secto, which would perhaps make him seem less threatening than if he was an enemy we've never met before. But of course, Secto would now be far more powerful and learned from his mistakes, so I think it could still work. He's no longer just in charge of one business and trapping a river, he'd now have been in control of a vast empire a thousand times bigger for potentially decades, as I'd assume the Octigai lived for a long time by taking over bodies and all that. By their nature, they just seem like a race designed to leech and live for a long time by taking over other forms. It reminds me of what the Family of Blood from Doctor Who was trying to do. It would certainly be a pleasant and very effective surprise, I think, to find out that not only is the Queen Glock and Lady Margaret not the true head of the cartel, but that we already know the person who it turns out to be. To back this up further, Secto and Stranger's Wrath uses Glock T Guy as his personal bodyguards and security, and likewise, concept art shows Lady Margaret being surrounded by her security force of Glock T Guy guards. They both have literally summoned the same forces to use as their personal protection. And there's a deeper connection with that too, that I want to go more into in another video, taking a closer look at them, about what the Glock T guy are and how they're created that would suggest that only certain smart industrialist individuals with the right knowledge would be able to have them. And Secto is one of those people for certain, which could suggest that maybe he got them for Lady Margaret too, as his personal front, the face of the leadership of the cartel. And while I've previously theorised that it might be an Octi guy in charge of it, I'd never before considered it could be Secto himself, but that'd be a really clever way to make it more personal, I guess. That we've seen this guy before, and it turns out he's basically the guy who's responsible for all the bad stuff that's happened in the games. 
Plus, it connects Abe with Stranger more personally by integrating Stranger into the Quintology without having them meet each other. Because Stranger's actions in his game would have resulted in what Abe encounters in his games. Stranger's Wrath was originally meant to be its own thing, its own game and story. Once that was done, Stranger's story was finished. But Sectos wasn't. Well, as far as this theory goes, I just wanted to say that line because I thought it sounded good. But it did seem that Oddworld inhabitants were kind of setting something up with Secto, or leaving it open at least. People did seem to think that there'd be a sequel to Stranger's Wrath, or at least frequently ask about one, despite Oddworld inhabitants saying Stranger's story was done. And a big reason for that probably is because they had Secto survive and escape the events of the game. What would be the point of that if they were never going to revisit the character again? Maybe they just did it for the sake of it. But potentially, they were setting up specifically Mr. Secto to be the main villain, the Octi guy on the Magog Cartel logo, and its founder. And perhaps Stranger's Wrath acts more as an origin story, a look into the history of the industrial forces, and what caused them to begin many years before the events of Abe's Odyssey. I don't know, of course, everything I've said in this video could easily just be absolute rubbish. I'm literally just looking at what we know and putting the pieces together to suggest a potential idea I, and I'm pretty sure many others, probably have had and gone into the specifics of it. But it's certainly interesting, in my opinion anyway, to consider what Oddworld inhabitants may have been thinking when they made Oddworld Stranger's Wrath and created the character of Mr. Sexo. Hello, follow me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 